Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. So in this one, we actually create um, some kind of death condition so we can actually have a game flow going. So uh, as soon as one of those blocks hits the tower, then it actually waits for an attack. There it is. It spawned a simple, really simple UI piece, um, which pretty much accounts as a recap menu. A little bit later on, we'll have information on there, such as how many enemies we've killed and uh, how many waves we lasted. Once we got all of this information, we can click on OK, it goes back to the hub, and then we pretty much start over again. And that is our game flow. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so last time we pretty much started creating some projectiles, so we actually get something um, spawned out of the tower, and then when it hits the enemy, then it goes ahead and just do the take damage function. And uh, take damage aside, is the enemy dead now? If it is, let's go ahead and remove him from the map. Now the only thing we need to get a good game flow going, and I'm, I'm pretty much talking about game flow because that's what we're aiming for as soon as possible. We're trying to get a level that you can join, you can play some round and then you can lose. So what we need right now is pretty much just a losing condition. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now, if I remember, if I remember correctly, um, we've made the enemy script in a manner that it would be quite simple to implement the uh, hit a tower function. So, if we go back inside of the enemy script, and I go somewhere over here in the update, now if my enemy is alive and the transition is at the very end, so that would be one. Since we're using a lerp, as soon as transition is above one then that means we reach our destination and we're ready to actually attack the tower. So if transition is bigger than 1, that means we can actually hit the tower. Now do we have some kind of attack per second? Yeah, there it is. So we also need a last attack, last hit. That's what we're going to be using. So if transition is bigger than 1, then we're going to check are we actually in cooldown? Like is our auto attack in cooldown? And the way we're going to do this is with another if statement. We could be doing it in the same thing as this one, but uh, just for the sake of um, understanding the code, I'm simply going to put it in an additional if statement. So if time.time .time minus a last hit is bigger than attack per second divided by actually 1 divided by attack per second. So that is going to give us, in this case, it is uh, attack per second is 1.5 if I remember correctly, so 1.5. So we get 1 divided by 1.5, which is a uh, cooldown of 0 0.66. So after 3 seconds, we should actually um, we should actually have hit the tower like a few times, so 3 seconds, that is 4.5 times. Okay. So if it does happen, if that is the case, then let's go ahead and reset our last set. So last set is equal to time dot time. And we're going to be taking some HP of the tower. So um, we're going to go under the tower. So we're going to need a new function. This one is going to be called private void take damage, just like in our enemy function. We're going to take in a float for the amount of damage taken. And inside of here, we're going to need to modify the current HP of the tower. Now, the current HP of the tower is um, a little bit weird to calculate right now. I think it is under the hit point, so let me go under there. So it is tower stats at the index int stat dot hit point. We're going to be using this one for now, but um, a little bit later on, we're going to be actually changing all our stats, and we're going to give this array is only going to be for the levels, and we're going to have another array which contains the value for, say, the hit point at level 4. But right now, since we only have this to work with, we are going to use this very array, and we're going to do minus equal amount. Now, if tower stats at the index int stat.hit point goes below 0, then we're going to do, just to reset it right now, of course this is not going to work in the long term, we're going to do tower stats at the index hit point is equal to 10, but we're also going to call the def function, which is something we don't have quite yet. So um, 
actually this is the def function itself so we're not going we're not going to be creating another function for def uh, since we're not going to be putting a lot of stuff in there all we got to do is turn off the game and um, create a menu so the ending menu a recap menu I like to call it so we're gonna need some kind of way to find the recap menu now the recap menu is something we don't we don't really have right now in the scene so I'm going to go under game and actually create a UI um, panel and this is going to be the recap menu now it is really important that you remember the name you called it because we're gonna be calling this this menu using its name so recap menu is going to be centered it is going to be of width say 250 by actually you know what let's go on the canvas first and uh, change our uh, canvas scaler for scale with screen size we are scaling on a 480 by 800 and now we can go back on the recap menu and actually modify that so scale let's say 250 by 250 and this is going to be the recap menu and inside of the recap menu there is going to be a button that moves you back to the menu scene now here it is I'm going to call this to menu and inside of the button I'll just type in the text OK for um, I have knowledge the recap information and I'm ready to move on to the other scene so here it is now all we're really missing is some kind of way to actually fill the text information in there and also um, well have a function that returns us back to the menu so I'm going to hit add a new component on this very to menu option and I'll be just creating a uh, recap menu script so recap menu like this and I will actually move this so I'll remove it from this guy and I'll put it on the actual recap menu and we're going to fix some error before we go any further so it says that I cannot reduce the int with a float so I'll just say I'll just like I said this is tem temporary um, code so I just cast this as a int in order for this to compile okay now if we go on the recap menu we put our actual recap menu script and we're going to be coding some uh, things here so let's actually start using the unity engine that scene manager so we can actually go back to menu using the scene manager and we are going to create a function a public one that is called to menu and to menu is only going to do scene manager dot load scene and we're going to be loading the menu scene just like this and that is pretty much going to be it to be honest for now at least now once I have my recap menu script on here and it has the public function to menu I can now go on my button hit the plus sign down here in the on click event and then drag and drop my recap menu in this little field here which will give me all the component that it owns including the recap menu component we just made now inside of here there should be the to menu function right here at the bottom I'm going to leave it here and then here it is that's our recap menu okay so if we actually go under the preloader we hit play go in the scene open up the scene we click OK it goes back to the menu scene now the menu, sh the menu might be a little bit too far let's actually return to the hub so um, we don't see the menu over and over again if we lose okay this should actually make a little bit more sense now that we move this to the hub and here we go okay so we can work on adding some transition a little bit later on as well and everything seems to be working just fine for this recap menu of course we don't really fill in information because we don't get any kind of information right now from the game a little bit later on we can add how many have we how many enemies have we killed how many uh, waves have we passed and all that kind of good information how much money we've made this round alright so next thing we need to fix is when we enter that scene we actually get the menu right here so we need to hide it that's uh, that's one of the first thing we need to actually hide this now the way we're gonna be accessing this object is using its name so that it was really important for you to remember which name you actually put in there so if I go back in my canvas mine is called recap menu I'm going to hit F2 so I can get the um, this highlighted text now copy this and I will head back inside of my tower script 
Now if I go on the function that's called on level was load, I can check is the active scene game. If it is game, that means the um, the menu is there, it's in that scene. So right here I'll say if is in game, then th if that is the case, then we're gonna say game object dot find game object, or I mean just find, and we're gonna find the object called recap menu. Now I'm going to take this and do set active to false. This way whenever we enter the game it should actually turn this object off. And if we hit play now, as you can tell we don't see the menu anymore. Now if the HP goes below zero, which is inside of the take damage function, if that does happen then let's do game object dot find recap menu set active to true. Just like this. And hopefully this work, it might actually crash because the game object was um, deactivated, but I'm not quite sure, so we're just going to test it out. Now if only one object gets close and does one damage, then we're going to lose, so I'm going to need to spell it a little bit more. And that should do it. Okay, so we're definitely missing something. Is the take damage even called? Let's go have a look. So no, take damage isn't called. Um, we're gonna do inside of the enemy script over here in the update function. We're gonna do the tower dot instance dot take damage. So it doesn't seem to have a take damage function in there as well. Did we put it? Oh, we put it private. Let's put it public. Okay, so now we should be able to call it take damage and we're gonna send the amount of damage we deal which is right here so damage like this and now we can actually try this for real going to spawn a few enemies and our tower should take at least one hit and actually die Okay, so it says no reference exception. That means we're going to need to find another way to actually call this object because when we do game object dot find this object, we don't actually find it because it is actually uh, disabled right now. So we're going to be keeping in we're going to be keeping a uh, value of that game object, a field. So we're going to go up here, say private game object, recap menu. Now recap menu is going to equal this over here. So recap menu is equal to game object dot find recap menu. And um, just after that we're gonna do recap menu dot set active is equal to false. Now since we have a value of that, a field that represent that very object, even though it is disabled, we can still access it. So I'm going to take my recap menu from here and actually put it up there. So recap menu dot set active is now equal to true. Now this way this should work pretty much a hundred percent. So let's try again, spawning a few enemies. And the second the tower is hit, we should actually see the menu pop. And here it is. So that is our menu right there. If I click OK, I can actually go back to the hub and then start over again if I wish. And that's going to be pretty much it for this episode, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any question or comment, you can always leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this or if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that as always. And um, of course, you can subscribe for more tutorials like these. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.